Keep in tune with Mayo. It's all you need. Mayo CRC FM. Welcome to Saturday Sport on CRC. We're going to have a look forward now to the National Football League, Mayo are starting this weekend. Uh, we have John O'Mahony on the line with us. John, how are you? Hello, Michael. How are you? Not bad now. Good, good. You looking forward to the return of the football? Yes, I suppose at this time of year always there's uh, supporters and, and, and whatnot because of the, the break of, of the... the Years ago, the league was played before Christmas and you had three games over you, but there's a, a big thirst from everyone to get out and see uh, what's, what's in line for the season ahead. And mm-hmm. I, I suppose with Mayo, after getting to the All-Ireland, I suppose the question on everybody's lips is, you know, how are they going to react to that? And are they going to uh, set down a, a marker, if you like, for the, for the coming year? I, I noticed in a lot of the analysts suggesting that it's an, an important league for Mayo, uh, to, if you like, to demonstrate that they have bounced back and left last year behind them and mm-hmm. make a statement for, for 2014. And do, do you agree with that? I mean, obviously, they, they're going to need some mental toughness to get over. It's hard enough to get over one All Ireland defeat, but to get over two in a row, do you think they have the mental toughness to, toughness to have a successful league campaign? Well, I think they have. I mean, the, the, the team is at a very advanced development stage, uh, and I think they they have that. But having said that, they have two they have two ga- league games away against Kildare uh, tomorrow, and against um, Tyrone, uh, next week. Tyrone the next day. And that's a difficult start. And obviously, that the need to get at least two points from those two games. Mm-hmm. And hopefully four would be great because I think then they'd be on a bit of a roll, all right. But I mean, if they're starting on the back foot with the way games, it can be difficult at times. But having said that, I think that they're up for it, even though they have quite an experimental um, team out tomorrow because of various reasons with Castlebar Mitchells and and and, and uh, I suppose Kiltain may have some involved as well with uh, Mike yeah. Sweeney if he's on the panel. Uh, but. Uh, you know they have a number of injuries and all, and all of that, and in, in an experienced team enough uh, out tomorrow, I would I would suggest so it won't be easy, but I think they should still be able to to get the point. Yeah, well, as you mentioned, there's a few injuries now. You have Alan Dillon, Killian O'Connor, Donny Vaughan, and Shamie O'Shea from last year's team all out through injury, and obviously you have the Castlebar and Kiltane players still going with their clubs. But do you think the team named for Sunday does that prove that there's strength and depth in Mayo? Well, I mean, that's what I suppose that's the question this morning that James Horden will want to know tomorrow evening. Uh, for instance, I mean, you see Kevin Keane is back there. This is a big game for him because he played in the previous All Ireland the year before last, and and uh, he has he hasn't been on you know a consistent uh, first teamer. So that will be a big game for his. Yeah, I noticed Colin Boyle at a corner back as well. I would have thought that. Uh, his best position was wing back. I mean, he won wing, an all star for wing back. So mm-hmm. there's obviously a little uh, bit of experimentation going on there. Uh, Shane McHale as well. Uh, you know, many people would have argued possibly that when Keith Higgins was put back in the second half last year, that maybe Shane McHale, uh, you know, he had subsequently good form, but not more, that he would have maybe been, should have been better if. Uh, Keith was left up front and so on so you know these are all the questions that uh, uh, tomorrow uh, will answer it's it's interesting to note in relation to Keith Higgins as well is that last year the move to play him centre forward only came I think in the Donegal match where they were counting, counteracting the Donegal changes or tactics now yeah. being been named there today would suggest that it's it looks like a permanent move. Yeah, it certainly looks like one that they're, they're going to give the season to. Um, Tom Parsons has returned to competitive action for Mayo. He's been gone now for almost three years. You gave Tom his senior debut in a Mayo jersey, John. Can he overcome the yes, injuries and I'm, loss of form and be important? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Tom, actually, I mean, he's young enough, he's physically strong enough, he's, he's, I think he's a good footballer. I suppose the, de- the difficulty with Tom over the period... Uh, was that he, he, he maybe he faded in and out of games, but he's a good footballer, and I'm glad to see him back. And I, I obviously, I'd say from his perspective, I understand he's working. He's working um, 
out of the country and, and, and is back and over so he's determined to make it again and I would imagine that he'll, he'll want to you know to really set his set his stall out mm-hmm. and, get, and take his second chance so I hope that it works out for him and I think again you have, uh, you know, the options are on the middle of the field. You have a lot. Of, I mean, the, the Shays were there last year. You had Barry Moore and you had, you had Jason Gibbons. But now he's another option. And, and if if he comes up, Trumps really will be, they all will be really well served in the in the middle of the field. I suppose as regards the match tomorrow, I mean, the other aspect of it, Jason Ryan, it's his first game, competitive game in the National League in charge. Usually there's a bit of a lift with the new manager. So, It'll be interesting to see uh, how they how how can they react on home territory with, with the new manager. Yeah, well, they're going well with the O'Byrne Cup and everything, so they'd, they'd be certainly be looking to continue that form. Yes, I suppose. But the only thing is, you know, the only thing I'd always say about those secondary competitions is that whether you win them or lose them, like Mayo went out of it uh, to Roscommon, and subsequently Roscommon got caught by Leitrim. Uh, so I I, don't, I wouldn't pay, like the tomorrow will be a kind of a, a general indication of the real form of teams mm. and how they have wintered if you like and and uh, so I wouldn't put much store in it except the fact obviously that a new manager will be setting out a stall and and they'll be wanting to impress them so I would expect a good a good. Uh, contest from Kildare but they all should even with the, the weakened team that they have out they should they should have enough maybe to squeeze through by a point or two yeah. uh, John Jimmy Blake here can I put a question to you uh, two years running we've been in the All-Ireland final should me all this league campaign uh, have a look at players all through the campaign and try and get form as a team that's capable of winning the All-Ireland final this year would it be not well, beneficial to them to use this campaign <laughs> well yes I mean that's one way they could look on it but really there's not a huge amount of uh, tinkering needed with the team if, if all the team was fit ok you're always looking for you know Adam Gallagher is in there he's supposed to be you know he's a good a good forward uh, but I think that I, I, I have a funny feeling that James Horton would want to probably even if he could win the league like the history of it recent years Cork year they won the championship won the league Kerry have done that in recent times as well so the fact that it's now all of the one calendar year I would say uh, that uh, because this team is three years or four years on the road I mean many of those lads made their debut with me in 2009 and 2010 so they were in their you know early 20s some of them just 20 that time they're about 24, 25 now so there isn't a huge amount of experimentation I would feel needed obviously there always is from the point of view of getting that one or two but I think that Mayo is one of the teams that should have a reasonably settled team in, in, the, in the league and I, I think that it should be the right view or the right thing for James to, to, to go and maybe try and win it and that's why if you like the first two games because they're away from home if, if, if they didn't go well or if you, if you dropped all the points there you're, you're, you'd only be trying to consolidate and maybe at that stage then you could experiment a little bit more but I think there would be a need to actually target the league to get a national title and that would mean a loss going into a, a provincial title third the third year in a row in other words you kind of psychologically you have won a national competition so I think that's maybe where he, he has pitched it and I think that's what he, that he's right to do that John Tony Stakelam here how are you um, Hello, Tony. Um, just a question, I suppose, getting away from the actual team in the football. How do you envisage the, you know, tomorrow we have the new black card system really is going to probably, we're going to see it up front for the first time because, like, it's going to be live on TV. How is that going to affect, I suppose, the players, but the management and and the way you pick your team anymore? Because, like, you know, with, with the black cards, guys can be taken off and you might have a guy on the sideline that might be as good. How does How is that all going to affect, you know, selection? And, and team selection on the day anymore? Well, it, it'll be an interesting mix. I mean, obviously, what all teams would have been taken through, what, you know, the exact rules of it and so on. And, you know, they probably they would have had their trial games and all of that. And obviously, the FBD games were in that light. But uh, tomorrow will be the first serious implementation of it. And, it, you know, there is no doubt about it. It is going to be a factor in big games. Uh, and tomorrow will be the first test of it. I mean, you can imagine 
the Tyrone um, Monaghan game where where Sean Cavanagh took down uh, the, the Monaghan corner forward in, in the final moments. I mean, that would have influenced that result probably right. if he had been sent off at that stage. So there will be a, a caution there among players. But, you know, look, at that's what it, it's there now. I, I, and I think players will have to just adapt to it and see how it works. But it's certainly from a management point of view, you know, they'll have to have their... They'll have to... One of, one of the things is that you'll have to have spare substitutions still available to you in the last 10 minutes of matches. Uh, so, you know, that's that, that's where, I suppose, that's where that's really a lot of the cynicism will probably come and, uh, you know, the block. That's, and, that's where it has come yeah, in the yeah. past and that's where <laughs> management will have to be able to be have people because remember if you, you know, after the third black card, you're actually um, you're down to uh, you cannot replace them. them. Now it's interesting that in a college's game in in, in the in Munster, I saw that the referee, yeah. Yeah. the referee actually made a mistake. So you'd wonder with all the training that the referees have. And, yeah, that and, was. Uh, it's a huge imposition on referees because you know you have black, yellow, and red, and to get the not only do you have you to think of when, which one is appropriate in which case. <laughs> yeah. But you also have to, if you if you have got a yellow earlier in the game, and that's where the referee made the mistake at Munster. That's right, uh, yeah. And then he got then he got a black, but he was allowed to stay on the field. That was actually, uh, or, he yeah. was, or he was allowed to be substituted, which he shouldn't have been. <laughs> uh, in other words, a, black, a yellow and a black adds to uh, make the uh, red. It, so, it, so. It, it, it all it all looks like it's going to be interesting. There's going to be reams of paper written about this in the next few days. No, anyway, no, 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 I think Monday will be excellent. There'll be a lot of commentary to it. I hope there's no mistake made by a referee tomorrow because that would kind of put the, put it on the back it's old, yeah. from yeah. the start. So yeah. I, hope, I hope it works well because yeah. it, uh, it's in everybody's interest that that cynicism is taken Indeed over. Indeed so, I agree with you. Uh, John, just one last thing before we let you go. You mentioned there how Mayo could do with the good league campaign heading in, it gives you a high going into the championship, but you've been in charge of Mayo heading over to New York before, and do you think getting to the latter stages of the league, getting that extra one or two competitive games, would serve Mayo well You know, before they go to New York, and then they will obviously have a Connick semi against Roscommon or Leitrim on the 8th of June? Yes, I mean, it does bridge the gap, because if you go out of the... Uh, if you go out of the league early, you, you have a longer gap and the nature of club competitions have started up. Then in the meantime, you tend to pick up a few more injuries and so on. So they would gain by actually getting to a league final as a, as a, as a bridge into the championship as well as the competition itself. Uh, and, you know, and with all due respect, um, uh, you know, the, the, the New York game shouldn't be a huge test. For them, mm-hmm. I would imagine the Leitrim, uh, the Leitrim was common one. Whoever gets into that would would be. But having said that, at the end of the day, you know, quietly behind closed doors, I think that uh, James Horden will be planning for the first, you know, the Connacht final. I would have expected this year to be against Galway, and you know, if they got to a league final. I think, you know, they won't say it because it would, be, it would almost sound too cocky, but I think that's what what, what the plan would be, uh, that that would be a big game for Mayo because it's certainly if if Galway have pride, and they, I know they have from being there for a number of years, uh, to, to bounce back from what happened in, in uh, Pierce Stadium last year. So, I, you know, I'd say the path of the championship campaign in, in James Horden's mind is well implanted at this stage and I, I would feel that that would be the, the various targets along the way. Yeah, and that would uh, probably include doing well in the league, not just staying up, but you know, the to I would win think it. Deep, da- deep down they would want to win the league, you know, and tomorrow is, it will, you know, you'll have a fair idea tomorrow evening if, if Mayo could put in mm. a, an impressive performance with, if you like, is it seven or eight of the of the All Ireland team and win that game? That would really be an important statement. And for the first of February, that or whatever it is, the second of February, that would really be an impressive statement for them to make by tomorrow evening. Yeah, and your su- success begets success, as they say. So you win a league, and it gets that yeah. national title monkey off your back. That's right. That's right. And God That's knows. Right. Where, God knows where we could go from there. We could be all celebrating in September. That's right. <laughs> with a bit of luck, yeah. John. Thank you very much. Thanks, well, John. You're very welcome, to, uh, Michael. You can and, try to find uh, out some uh, secrets now while you're down in the kingdom. <laughs> I will indeed. I will indeed. Best, Thanks very much, John. Thanks very much. Bye Thank bye. You.
Now we're joined in studio by um, former Mayo and Donegal footballer Martin Kearney. Martin, how are you? Very well, thanks, Michael. Very good. Now um, you're welcome into the CRC studios. I'm sure it's been a while since we're here. I think sometime <laughs> last year, <laughs> on a number of occasions. That's years. right. One day, which I, was, I think it was Mayo and Donegal were in the All Ireland final. Yeah. Yeah. Hedging the bets all around the place. Well, in fairness, it was a difficult time for you yeah. because, yeah. like. Like, um, you're a Donegal man first and foremost. Yes, yes, you know, yes. Oh, yeah. You've lived in Mayo all your life, so it was, it was, you know, those days are not days to enjoy. Ah, uh, they're not, no, but at the same time, um, I've seen Donegal now win two All Irelands, which has been wonderful, but I'd love to see Mayo win. Of all, of it, just, I'd die happy if they win one, you know, <laughs> like a lot of people. <laughs> well, I wonder, could could this be the year we, we kick off tomorrow? I will be, it starts tomorrow, Michael, and I mean, it's a big year for the team, obviously. Maybe, you know, they've given so much uh, physically, psychologically and, uh, and in every way to their supporters over the last number of years that, you know, they can't go on forever. Mm-hmm. Like, and this year definitely be a big year. What we would hope to see in the short term would be maybe the emergence of one or two new players that could really add to the squad yeah. and boost the quality of the squad. The, the squad is very well established and they're, you know, they're the most honest, hard-working group of players that I know of with a management team that spare no nothing to actually get the most out of them but there is a need I think for a, a little bit of new blood so maybe the next couple of league games will allow us to see maybe Darren Cohn step up I was very impressed with him in the few um, FBD games I saw him and I thought he did simple things very well scored points one possession well scored points and maybe if he came into his own and one or two others stepped up you know mm. I'd love to see Evan Regan maybe in time coming in but I'd like to see him for the moment maybe just staying with the under 21s yeah. you know cutting his teeth there and and then making maybe the step forward yeah. if that's to be his wish. Well, it's interesting that it's two forwards that you mentioned as hoping for new blood. It, it is, does seem to be what Mayo are probably looking for. Well, I think you ask any county team what they're looking for in hurling or football, and it's forwards, it's quality forwards. Yeah. You know, you look at Waterford yeah. hurlers going back. Waterford hurlers lived off John Mullan and Paul Flynn right. for years. Right. You know, Nicky, we, we don't think of backs when we think of great f- f- uh, hurlers and football. We instinctively remember forwards. Right. And I mean, if they win the game and they determine by how much a game is won mm-hmm. as well. Certainly it's so important to have a good defence and a defence that's going to keep the score down. But at the end of the day, it's the boys at the other side of the pitch yeah. that determine whether you're going to come home with or without the garland. Yeah, well, I think it, that was proved last year. Mayo probably had the best defence, but it does only get you so far. Well, it got them so far and I still think there was very little in that All-Ireland final. Mm-hmm. I often think, and I, I, I go to my grave believing, that had we got the next score after the goal we scored, we'd have gone on to win that All-Ireland. Ireland. We needed just that yeah. little bit of extra oomph to bring us across the line. I think if we could have, there's the next score came, wasn't it, uh, Tony? Uh, um, uh, Brogan's goal. Brogan's uh, uh, Dublin goal followed our goal. I'm yeah. convinced that we scored the next score. And actually, built on what, on, on Andy's goal, we'd have gone on to win that All Ireland. Yeah, I, you know? I fully agree with you, and, mm. I, and I actually I agree with what I was reading the Irish Times today, and I seen you were quoted. I agree with what you said about the reaction following that goal. Yeah, that is when the Mayo fans should have that well, primal I, roar. I, I, yeah, there was a primal roar. I, I, I think absent. But like I talked at length to Keith Duggan about it this week. I find Keith is from my hometown in Donegal, mm-hmm. and we often just have a chat about anything from what's like he's a great man for. Theme and that and his father and my brother would be very involved in the Allingham Society up in, in, in Ballyshannon and we talk about lots of things but we talked a lot about Mayo during the week and like a lot of people Michael he would give anything give anything to see Mayo win in All-Ireland you know oh. because it has been part of his <laughs> shall we